Hi guys, welcome back to a new episode. Today we we will be looking at Urobrask the Hidden, and it's the Red Praetor. It costs 3 red red for a 4-4, which gives all of your creatures haste and makes creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. So this is probably the most simplistic of all the Praetors, but it's very handy to get attacks in and to increase the power of your creatures by giving them haste. And I think haste is probably one of the most underrated abilities in the game, because essentially it lets you avoid sorcery speed removal spells and board wipes. And it allows you to get a turn in with your creature before the opponent has a chance to retaliate. So it's really important. Mono Red is probably one of the hardest decks to pilot in this format. People used to think white was the hardest one due to the white card advantage, but I actually think it's gone down to red because black now actually has ways to deal with enchantments, whereas red really doesn't. Red can't deal with enchantments, and enchantments are one of the strongest permanent types in the game. So you can have to gain advantages in other ways. One of the ways is through speed, so that's why the curve is so low at 2 mana. And don't underestimate the power of just a few extra cards here and there. So stuff like Tibolt being able to um, add 2 mana, then you can draft a card with Tibolt, and then you can exile it during that turn, you can make plot, sorry, until the turn you may cast it. It's a bit wordy, but if you can right click and see all the different options you have with this card. So stuff like this is really important, just to give you virtual card advantage. Because red doesn't just let you draw, most of the effects will be exile, you can play them until the turn. Another nice way to gain a bit of advantage is from Wickerwing Effigy, which is a pretty cool card from Alchemy. 3 mana 1 for Defender, you may look at the top card of your library any time, and you may cast creature spells from the top of your library. But if you do, it becomes a blackbird in addition to its other colours and types, has flying and it's a 1-1. One, one. But this is a really good way just to get anything onto the board. Sometimes you're just desperate to get any presence and um, this can be really useful to rebuild your board. There is no limit to this, you can do this any number of times per turn, which is really powerful. And stuff like Chandra, which exiles the top card of your library, if it's red you may cast it. So keep in mind these effects are really powerful. And you've even got one of the another alchemy cards, Soul Stealer X. Whenever a creature, equipped creature deals damage to a player, you can seek a card with mana value equal to that damage. So the variance on this is quite high, but you're still getting useful things into your hand where you might not necessarily have it. Um, but yeah, as with any monocolor deck, you are weak to not having any versatility in any other colors. So you're going to have to try and find cards that do things that you wouldn't normally do. But yeah, the deck list is in the description below. Don't forget to check that out. Leave me a like and a sub if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you after the games for the post-game breakdown. Okay, so we go first against Yurok. So this will be a tough matchup because they have access to three colors and there's so much versatility in Saltai colors. And starting hand isn't too bad. We'll see how this goes. The Frenzy Guys Blast is kind of nuanced in that when it enters, if there are 20 or more instants and or sorceries among cards in your graveyard hand or library, you may discard a card if you do seek an instant or sorcery card. So, yeah, a bit of a weird ability there, but can be a way to boost you up a bit. So, what should we discard? I think we can discard the Urza's Rage here. And struck it, which is okay. Let's just power up our mana a bit. Lotus Cobra, so we're going to definitely want to kill this. Ooh, some nice land destruction stuff there. But yeah, definitely just going to go ahead, kill the Cobra before they can get any land treasures here. Prowess as well, really powerful. Just rewards you for doing stuff you'd normally do anyway. And then we can follow up with a couple of land destruction spells. And yeah, land destruction is evil, but against three color decks, that's all we really have to gain advantage. Because if you consider lands equals speed, we are reducing their speed by taking away their lands, right? So that's the logic. So I think we go for the rift first. Just because the demolish can be artifacts. So always go for the things that have the fewest targets first. I'm surprised the opponent concedes after the next turn though. But it's a very cutthroat format as you all know. No one's going to be nice to you, so you might as well use the most tactical cards you can. And these are, you know, these are commons. Oh, that feels pretty good. Beating the double trigger Yarok deck is always a great feeling, especially with mono red. Okay, opponent goes first with Nashi. So whenever Nashi hits us, 
Exile top card of each player's library and they can cast one of those spells but they pay life equal to its mana cost rather than pay actual mana. So it's like a one-off Bellas of Citadel when it hits you. Weird thing about Ninjutsu is it doesn't actually work from the command zone. So it's a bit of a numbo, unlike Yuriko in Commander where you can do it from the command zone as well. Get the Tomb of Legends, this will be useful. So they're mono black. They might have some discard effects. Rampant up even more. Okay. Draining us and gaining. Okay, that's an interesting choice. Go for the Tin Street Kingpin here. Let's make them have to have removal. This guy can get out of control very easily. So they've got six mana. Here comes Nashi. So definitely going to try and kill it here. And if, if it resolves, um, we get some snow mana to cast the eye effect now as well. Okay, that's a really nice bit of... Um, tech there, so now we can go for this, draw a card, and then we can even draw a card with the Tome of Legends as well. Fatal Push. Okay, well, I guess an eye for an eye, isn't it? So it probably would have been better if we attacked first, and unfortunately, so we missed out a little bit there. Let's draw with the Tome of Legends. So now they're getting desperate as well. Looks like their hand is out of action, that's why they sack that. And then you'll give the memorial to war. So this also has land destruction built into it. So here comes Nashi again. And no, we won't pay this time. But I will kill Nashi here. Because it's... You know, the advantage it gets is pretty awesome. I'll take that out. So Nashi for 7 mana, not so great is it for a 3-2 unfortunately, but here it comes again. 3-4-5, yeah I will pay this time. And then I think, yeah I'm going to Storm's Wrath, I can't imagine them having that many creatures right, anyway. I've done it now, so hopefully not. I just like the idea of using the most expensive spells first. They chose the graveyard, so they've got some kind of reanimation effect. Making us discard. Um, yeah, we go for the Cathartic Reunion. I like these cards too much to get rid of them anyway, so... And yeah, let's pay. Okay. So, this is in the graveyard, that's... Interesting. Have they got an instant speed reanimation effect, maybe? Three, four, five. Let's go for the Atsushi. So if this guy dies, we get some treasures or place off, off the top. So not the end of the world. I get the logic of having the burglar rat with ninjutsu, but if if Nashi's in your, in your command zone, you, you can't actually ninjutsu him. Unless there's other ninjutsu effects in the deck. Doom. So blood pact. Don't know why I said doom pact then. Uh, yeah, let's draw some more. Looks like they're keeping mana up to kill our Urubrask. Swing in for now. Let's start going over the top. Do I give for the Urubrask anyway? I think so, just because we've got the Tome of Legends as well, and we can use the Tome to draw a card. And we'll leave him back as a blocker for now, because we're at 14, we're fairly you know, at the mid midway point here. Blood on the snow. I see. It all makes sense now. So 
so they get Nashi back. So they were basically waiting for us to spam the field, which is exactly what they did. Ooh, Electro Dominance is cool. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. So we've got a little window to do this. Hopefully, don't have a way to give him haste. But if we do kill this again, I'm not sure if they can cast it anymore. Okay, so holding priority. Yep, yeah, sure. So this turn we're not going to pay because we want to do a few other things first. So we could go for Bergy. How much have we got? Six, seven, eight, eight mana, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. So we could go for five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's go for the Harnfell, because this is going to give us quite a lot of card advantage. And black can't deal with artifacts. They could have the Ugin the Ineffable 6 mana 1 though. So this is really awesome card. Exile, sorry, discard a card, exile top 2. You can play those until the next turn. This is essentially what Atsushi just let me do. And then now we can go for the Dominance. Pay 2. Go for the Nashi. So we can't get any free spells off of this, but... If for whatever reason they give this, like, regeneration or something, then something like that effect, then maybe the Triumph would be good. Plus two. That's interesting. So actually, this actually really panned out here. That was mega lucky. So the redundancy we had actually paid off. Freaking awesome. Yeah, they almost got us with that. That would have been really bad for us because, you know, lifelink. A lifelink counter on this, when it attacks, is great because they can just pay a bit more life then, can't they, once they exile our spells. Dread Presence. This could be annoying. Especially the Drain effect here. Whenever they play a Swamp. And a Foreboding Fruit. Okay. So yes, we definitely want to kill this guy because of the Drain effect he has. Wow. Everything they play is just so powerful. <laughs> I guess because we can't gain life, right? So it hurts more than some other decks may feel. They choose the draw effect. Interesting. This is going to be quite a grindy, grindy game then. So because the wording of this, we might want to just keep lands in our hand rather than play them straight out. Because you can still play lands exiled with this horn. Um, but yeah. Just got a card. Play up to two cards. Really powerful. Don't really see this very often. Okay. So we don't need to pay here because we're getting, as I said, riskily low, especially with the Dread Presence out. So the opponent has entered a somewhat unusual phase now where they're just holding priority at random intervals which is kind of obnoxious let's just hope it's innocent but yeah as you can see every time I just do something just holding priority just so irritating okay so what should we do let's definitely use the abrade to try and kill the presence Oh, man, it, this is the part of the game I don't like. It, everything becomes an ordeal. 
there's sort of like a cadence to a game, isn't there? There's a to and fro, like playing chess backwards and forwards. And then there comes a point when someone's like fed up and then they just hold the timer like this. So obnoxious. Just stop this. Please stop this now. It's just infuriating. I've got other things to do in my life. Come on. Also, if you're so miserable playing this game, just go and do something else. You don't need to make someone else miserable. You're doubling the amount of misery there is. Why don't you divide the misery by two by quitting now, rather than just being a lunatic? Ah, oh, come on. Day's been alright so far. You, there's always one, isn't there? There's always one person out there to ruin your day on this game. Come on. Look at this guy. Why is this happening? Jeez, did that really need to take two hours? Let's look at what they got on top of the deck. Okay, so we'll play their arcane signet. And yeah, let's maximize our mana go for the town race tyrant here. Okay. And yeah, let's pass the turn. And for whatever reason it is, there's no timer in best of one. It doesn't make any sense normally in best of three, any format. Even limited. You get time on the left, but there's no there's no timer here. And I don't know who thought this was a freaking genius idea. You're like watching that economy video that Arena released a couple of weeks back saying this is a casual format really okay sure it is I think what they meant to say was this was their most casual format but the most casual format in arena is still freaking competitive and yeah this is this is what you just saw is you know very common They'll make the time go down and then quit. So what's the point if you... I don't know. Weird. Anyway, moving on to whatever comes next. We go first against Mono Black IR. So they're going to be a black creature drain style deck. That's basically the way to build Yara. I can't see any other way because she mentions creatures on the card. So let's see how we can do. Black has access to live game, so that's always bad for red to see. They're gonna thought seize us, duress us, maybe. Thought seize. Uh, sometimes it's painful knowing the answers. Uh, turn one thought seize. I think that's probably one of the most tilting feelings in in magic, especially when you uh, go to like a big tournament or something. And you sit down for the f your first of eight games of the day, and someone goes, Turn on Thought Seize. It's like, Oh my god, why? <laughs> oh, fair enough. I guess they don't even like Turn on Thought Seize. <laughs> okay, we can first against Nico Aris. This is quite an interesting matchup. I don't think I've faced a Nico Aris in, in a long time. So they're a Planeswalker, they can create shard tokens. Equal to X. Is this the first plane to walk up X in its cost? Might be. And then they can do all sorts of cool stuff with the shards. Create more shards, sacrifice shards. Yeah, nice. Nice design. Bit of a build around. A lot more interesting than Teferi. So grateful for that. Always grateful for these unique matchups. Now we could just win instantly here by stone raining their island. <laughs> let's not let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's let's at least try and hit a dual land. Okay, they've got two blue open. Do we do we stone rain here? We've got two mana open. Yeah, let's stone rain here. If they counter it then we have a fair game, and if they don't then we have an unfair game. 
And uh, there we go. That <laughs> unfair game it is. Okay, so Pink goes first with Voron Collects Voice of Hunger, which incidentally will be the next video I do, so tune in next time for the final Praetor from the Phyrexia cycle. Let's see if we can do anything against this guy. So if they resolve this, we are in a lot of trouble. I don't expect to have a good time versus this guy, but we shall see. It is 8 mana, but obviously green has ramp, so and there's one, one of the ramp pieces already. We could slow them down here, but I kind of want to get a Magda out here, deal some damage, get some mana. Could be a mistake. They always say Bolt the Bird. Oracle of Moldiah. Yikes. Yeah, that probably was a mistake. And, well, they're not going to trade. That would be interesting if they did, though. Will they trade? Don't think so. And I think we just braid her, get rid of the Florahedron. I mean, they can play a couple of lands with Oracle, but would be nice if we hit a land drop ourselves. Vizier of the Menagerie. Okay, this is definitely tough. So now we can't attack in, and so. What can we do here? Okay, we're going to sacrifice our Magda. Let's see if they choose to block. Might be able to just psych them out a bit here. Interesting. Okay, so now we can go for the dominance. Kill them, Oracle of Moldaya. And then we can play the Cold Steel Heart. So. This is hyper aggressive of us, but we have to just, you know, slow them down a bit. And then next turn, if they go for the elves and maybe some other creatures, maybe we could Storm's Wrath, but I don't really know. We do need to start getting more mana though. That is a bit of an issue. Yep, this will happen. I mean, we do have 37 lands in the deck and mana rocks and ramps, so not really sure what's going on. There's his rage. Right, let's swing in again. Hmm, they could have a fight spell here. Okay, let's see. Okay. So do they block? Three, four, five, six. So they're two mana off the Vorinclex. No blocks. See, now I don't really want to use the Storm's Wrath, but it would be two great hits. I just don't know what's in their hand. They could have something with Flash. Maybe we just... Maybe we just kill the Lana Rata. Take them off some mana. We're never going to cast it for 11, let's face it. Well, have they got some kind of Collector Company spell, maybe? Wilt. That's intriguing. So they decided to, instead of destroy our rock, they went for the cycle. Well, that was lucky of us, because if they killed us Coastal Heart, we'd be in a lot of trouble. The Great Hen. Holy crap. We're in a lot of trouble now. We are in a lot. Although, saying that, we do have the smashing success, don't we? So let's just go for this. Kill this. Four, five, six. So the two, two men are off still. And we get a treasure this way. Very, very lucky. And we'll hold back now. No idea how we're going to get through the Varun Clicks if it does land. <laughs> Need more land removal, to be honest. Ugin, yikes. That could be it. Are they minus? Okay, they're going to be plus. Interesting. So they'll definitely be able to get Varun Clicks out now. So I think this is going to be game. Pretty rough matchup there. Red versus Varun Clicks. What could we do? I don't think anything we can do. Okay, let's swing in to Ugin, I guess. We'll get we'll get a treasure.
And so we've got six, seven mana. What's that going to be good for? So they can just kill anything with Ugin anyway, right? Yikes. I guess we'll go for the blasting cannons here. Yep, sometimes when you get one of these matchups, you kind of have to just put it into your head that you, you're basically not going to win. Um, green is possibly the strongest colour in Magic right now. And the the fact they can ramp so hard and then get even further with Varun Flex is just ludicrous, really. But there you go. They could have just played Varun Flex. This is what you'd call flexing, though. They don't need to do any of this. We'll see how unsporting it gets. Well, they've, they've basically won, right? They could have just cast the Varun Clex and then we wouldn't be able to really react, but I guess they're playing it safe. Whatever we play, they can kill with the Ugin. So I suppose the most damage we can deal is kill the creatures and hurt their walkers a little bit. Um... Although saying that, I could have done a 1-2 punch there, couldn't I? If I went for the Torbrand first, then it would have dealt 6 damage to everything. That would have killed everything. Yeah, that's a shame. That is a shame. So, we'll go for Hazard here. If they play the Nyx Blue Mansion, that's just flexing at this point. Because Warren Clex is enough to just time warp us and what I mean by that is when we tap our mana it doesn't untap in our next phase so Ulamog okay 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 there you go so yeah I'm just going to concede now Ulamog is um, irretrievable data basically corrupted data <laughs> cool moving on to the next game then Okay, opponent goes first with Ashok Dream Render. I quite like this matchup because all they're going to care about is milling my stuff. Um, so if they're a dedicated mill deck, I don't care. This is going to be a nice matchup. If they're a control shell, this is going to be a lot more nightmarish. So yeah, let's start with the island. We'll keep the Shatter Skull smashing because this can deal with Planeswalkers. We'll see what they go. They might play the Crab or something. Sanctum. Hmm. Okay, this seems to be more like a um, normal control deck with an Ashiok on the side. Okay. So for now, let's give for the Geist Blaster. And yeah, I'll get rid of the Cemetery Gatekeeper for now. Lava Coil. So this is probably less useful. The Drain here could save them quite a bit. If they go for the Ashiok, we can kill it pretty easily as well, so in a way, I invite it. Go, go ahead and cast cast Ashiok. Oh, nice. See, the thing about Mill is, I'm not sure if Mill is that good in his start brawl yet. I think it's a bit too early. So what should we do? We can just kill Ashiok, right? Do we even care? Yeah, I guess. It's, Your lack of fear it's not qu quite scary, but it's just more irritating than anything. And... Yeah, well, we'll have to send attacks. And we can finish the Ashiok off. So I guess Ashiok is like pretty likely to be kind of right, because they just save you 6 damage to themselves. You haunted by this I really want to get the tip art out because planeswalkers are very good against control, obviously. They probably have a lot of creature removal being blue and black. These lands are kind of annoying because from a distance they, they all look the same. This is blue and this is black, but you know. Wow, feed the swarm. Okay. So let's get rid of one of the lands. I suppose the dual land is the correct answer here because it gives them two colours. They're going to Narset's Reverse on me or something. This is kind of funny now. <laughs> oh. 
Hello and welcome back to the post-game review. What did I think of Urbras the Hidden? Well, this is an interesting one. A lot of the matchups you face using this deck, for some reason, are just really powerful tier 1 decks, but I just don't see it. I'm not seeing this, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know why. I was faced against Kenrith about 2 or 3 times and some other really powerful decks. It's mono-red. <laughs> like, it's not as fast as 60 card, you know, standard historic would be so that's out of the question mono red has never been that fast in anything outside of 60 card formats so i feel like i've got a bit punished there facing some really tough enemies so good luck to anyone who wants to make this it's a shame because it was really fun the only weird downside is that it became kind of like a bit of a salt inducing session because all i'd be doing is like destroying the opponent's lands with demolish or smashing success and tectonic rift but it's like an extreme pendulum, right? So the game would be either no fun at all or really fun for someone. And I guess that's just how Arena is. But yeah, as soon as I destroy someone's land, they'd basically immediately quit. And then I, you know, I don't really like to include too, too many of those games because they're just you know, under a minute, two minute games, which isn't very interesting. I don't know, someone might find it trolling and fun. And yeah, you know, the first few times it can be fun, but when you just want to have a good game. And then you get the games when the opponent is absolutely trouncing you with their control builds. And then those are the kind of games where these land to kill effects don't really work and neither does much else. So you're getting absolutely annihilated. So it's weird. There's no in-between with this deck. And I don't know why that is. And like the other Praetors, you kind of have some decent mid-range games to long-range games. I suppose Mono Red's weakness is the fact that he doesn't do well in the long game. And that's why I put some 5 minute spells like Tibolt and the Glorybringer in just to kind of balance out the top end of the game. Um... Yeah, it's it's weird. I don't I don't really get mono red in hundred card formats. It's very difficult. The only successful way I've kind of built big red before is more controlling, and maybe that's why I went wrong here, because the small assets like Runaway Steamkin and the Robber of the Riches, they just they're just not going to get in because removal is so good, and it, these are the kind of cards that shine in multiples. Like if you have four Runaway Steamkin on the field, like in standard old standard days, the benefit was insane but having just one out i think that's the thing it's weird something you don't really think about certain colors do better in multiples whereas certain other colors do better in single singular like mono blue for instance one counter spell feels devastating doesn't it but one lava coil in this format i don't know that's just a random example just doesn't have the same impact so i can see why not many people use this general i don't think i've I think maybe one. I saw one person use Urabrask in the three or four years that I've played Arena. But yeah, that's my analysis. Um, not really sure where to take it. Maybe the format's too young on Arena to really make a powerful red deck. Maybe it needs to be faster. Maybe I need to have like 20 one drops. Maybe reduce the man the mana down to like 30 some, maybe 32. Cut all the four drops, all the five drops, and just go mega aggressive. The other thing is Urabrash comes out on turn 5, so any creature you cast after him doesn't really have the impact you want unless the creatures are huge, because all the good stuff in red anyway normally has haste, so like Rob of the Rich. The things it does give haste to, which is important, is stuff like Legion War Boss and Krenko. You are getting a massive boost from that. But perhaps you could go big, go really big creatures instead. M many more mana rocks. But yeah, I'll leave it up to you. As I said, the deck list is in the description below. Check it out. Tweak it, do what you like to it, tell me what you think. Don't forget to leave me a like and a sub if you enjoy what you see. And if you you know if you enjoy my commentary and stuff, be awesome if you could consider maybe donating using the Kofi link in the description below. I think you can just give like three pounds and then you know it supports the channel and not a penny of that goes to Kofi, which is really awesome. It's an awesome system. And uh, I hope some of you may consider it. And the more donations I get, maybe the more decks I can build as well, because then it means I get more wild cards and I can start making more decks. But yeah, until next time, see you guys later. Bye. If you enjoyed watching this video, why not try some of my other videos on my channel? And don't forget to support me by hitting the like and subscribe button for more content like this.